Welcome one and all to the first mini-boss of Stone Tower Temple. As you enter the room, you'll see a short scene in which he hops down and sets his blades on fire. Tettle's vague hints tell you that he's a harder variation of the Garos you've faced thus far. Well, that was informative. I had no idea. As you'll quickly find out, he'll defend against your attacks if you try to hit him, and as Tattle somewhat hints, you have to dodge his attacks rather than deflecting them, and this will give you an opening so that you can hit him. The one trick you can use is to wear the Goron mask and timing out your Goron pounds so that you hit him. Just be prepared to defend immediately after that, though, because he counterattacks. Now, you can also fight him in your normal form, but just watch out because if you are too far away, he will then teleport and try to land on top of you. He will quickly run out of the way, then turn around and hit him if this happens. Again, just be sure to defend right after that so that you can uh, defend against his counterattack. That's pretty much all there is to this guy. He's pretty simple once you understand how to dish out the pain. Would you like an extra helping of agony with that ninja man? No? How about a couple scoops of suffering with a cherry on top? <laughs> now the one thing to avoid is obviously using the Deku Mask or Zora Mask because of his flaming swords. They will burn you, forcing you to start the battle over again. Just in case you were curious. So once he's been defeated, he will disappear in the traditional Garo fashion of suicide, but giving you some very useful information before he goes that he probably shouldn't be telling you at all. Oh well, works for me. He says that we need to shoot the golden light into the red emblem outside to rearrange the temple itself. Of course. Now if you've been observant or if you've heard of this temple before, you probably know what's coming. Anyway, open the large chest that appears to get the light arrows. Now you can use this with magic to charge up your arrows and make them all snazzy. Now they do decent damage in general, but they are also required to defeat some specific enemies in this game. In this next room, you want to hop onto the little ledge in front of you and then jump onto the narrow platform. You'll see a masked hip loop up here, and it's just like the ones we faced before, but you have to remove the mask first in order to defeat it. Now you can pull this off with the hookshot, or you can use explosives like the bombs or the blast mask. I recommend the hookshot route just because you can just use the hookshot again immediately afterwards and defeat it that way. It's pretty easy. After it's dead, you can then gather the rupees that are on either side if you want, and there's a target that is on the ceiling that you can use to get back up top to the platform, which you can then also use in case you fall down to the bottom of the room. You can use the target that way. When you're done messing around here, you want to hop back onto the narrow platform and enter the next door. At the end of this bridge, you'll encounter a new enemy called an Igor. Which sounds like eyesore to me. <laughs> you want to Z-target it as soon as you can, and Tattle gives you a clue that you'd realize in just a few seconds of fighting it, but whatever. These giants are only vulnerable just after attacking when their eye turns yellow. You want to walk forward to taunt it into attacking, and then quickly back up so that you don't get hit by its fists or the chunks of rock. They're like shrapnel. You want to shoot its eye with a regular arrow as soon as possible, and it's kind of a cool enemy, but it's a bit simple. I think it's a shame that there isn't more enemies like this in this game. It's just its just interesting. It's like a puzzle to defeat it. Um, I mean, most of the enemies in Zelda are, but, you know. Once it's defeated, you want to go back and open the large chest that appears to find a stray fairy. And by the way, if you look off to either side of the bridge, you'll realize that this is a room that we've been in before. We're just going through it a different way. I think it's kind of cool. They're, like, reusing the same rooms in different ways, and I think that's very clever of them. On oh, this next door, you'll find yourself back in the entrance room. You want to just jump off to either the left or right side after you open the chest if you haven't done that yet. I actually already did that earlier. You want to head back out the doorway to return to the stone tower area out the entrance. And outside, you want to step on the floor switch to your right and play the Elegy of Emptiness to create a statue. So we'll hold it down, and this particular switch moves the middle block backwards, unveiling the red emblem that the Garo Masker told us about earlier. He said that if we shot it with a sacred golden light, that it would rearrange things in the temple. Let's test this out, shall we? And just when you thought Majora's Mask wasn't a drug trip, it proves you wrong after all. Again. <laughs> Stone Tower is now flipped, and if you warp to any of the owl statues at this point, it will make the world right side up again, for those of you who are curious. Now you'll notice that there are four blocks here instead of three. Strange, perhaps they multiplied. <laughs> also, I do have to point out the Triforces that are apparently on the underside of these blocks, because if I don't mention them, then all of fandom will explode and try to inform me, assuming that I don't know about them when I really just don't have time to talk about it. <laughs> so in case it wasn't painfully obvious yet, the entire temple is now flipped. You want to run forward and careful not to fall into the sky, and then go stand on the far side of the Majora's Mask emblem on the floor. You want to whip out your light arrows and look upwards to see the sun face that is inside the pit where we killed the Bombchu earlier. 
you want to shoot the sun face to make a chest appear in front of you, and then open it to get the eighth Stray Fairy. Now there's some crates on either side of the room that you can use to stock up on magic and arrows if you are low, but when you're ready, you want to go ahead and enter the only door that is available to us, which you'll notice has another door directly above it, which we used when the temple was right side up. Ah! <laughs> Now there's a sunblock in here, which is ironic because there's also one in the same location when the temple is flipped the other way. You want to shoot it with a light arrow to remove it, and then round the corner and jump down. Now if you turn around at this point, you'll see there's an eye switch that is covered in ice. You want to shoot it with a fire arrow to make a chest appear on the nearby ledge. You want to slap on the deco mask so that you can spin into these air geysers to fly up in the room. And there's a middle one that will take you to the lowest point, so you want to do that, and then take it forward, and you should be able to just make it to the ledge and open the chest to get the ninth Stray Fairy. Next, turn around and hop into the air geyser thingy duber on the left. I find it's easier to move around with a Deku Mask and spin on these angled parts to move faster. At the top, you want to fly to the middle platform and enter the hallway on your right. This leads to a dead end, but you can hop into the grasp of the Dexy Hand here and use it to get some rubies. That's kind of cool. They kind of hint at this, but I think a lot of people are afraid to get grasped by Dexy Hands. They don't do any damage, so don't worry. You want to step on the floor switch here to make a chest appear back in the previous room on the bridge where we met up with another masked hip loop. Now I showed earlier that you can take off their armored mask with the hookshot, but you can also use explosives. You can either toss a bomb at them or use the blast mask to blow it up, then dispose of them with the regular hip loop that is left. After that, you want to go open the chest to get a small key. So here, I was trying to look at whatever Tattle was trying to point out. I don't believe I've ever seen that before. I'm not sure what she was getting at, but anyway. You want to aim up and shoot the upside-down sun face with a light arrow. This creates a chest that will appear upside-down on that same platform, so we'll have to return here later for that. Ugh. Now, the reason we had to do this right now is because that sun face is normally underwater when the temple is right-side-up, so we had to shoot it while the temple was upside-down, but we need the temple to be right-side-up to get the chest. Uh, anyway, next, turn off your left, spin into the air geyser, taking you to the mid-level platform. Now, step on the floor switch to remove the fire from the upper platform, but the switch will pop back up as soon as you leave it, so play the LG of Emptiness to create a statue and hold it down, and then fly over to the opposite side of the room and use the tallest air geyser thingy to reach the upper platform with the chest that we just made appear. Or rather, the fire disappeared. You want to try to get your view facing the other way so that you can actually see where you're going. That's always nice. And you'll notice that there are a ton of spike mines hanging down here. You can shoot them from below and try and get them to bonk into each other and explode, but I think it's pretty easy to just fly right over them. Um, so open the chest here to find the tenth stray fairy. Now in the far upper corner of the room is a locked door that is guarded by some spiked mines. You can shoot them if you like, but I don't really think it's necessary. Just spin into the tallest geyser, and then use it to reach the upper platform and enter the locked door. There's not much to do in this room, and it's pretty obvious, but there's a suspicious red emblem straight ahead. So shoot it with a light arrow, and this will flip the room. And then you can slap on the Goron mask and walk through the lava, stand on the center platform, and shoot the red emblem again. And when the lava is on the ceiling like this, it can drip down, but it doesn't happen very often, so it probably won't hit you, though, unless you're very unlucky, like so. <laughs> Great. You want to go through the door, and beware of the choo-choos ahead. Beware the choo-choos. Now these things may come after you, but just be ready to stop and defend yourself if this happens. This puzzle is fairly obvious as well, but what you need to do is move the block as far as you can and then use light arrows to flip the room. Now you just repeat this process over and over and over again, trying to get the block all the way over to the opposite side of the room. Now the choo-choos here are definitely annoying, but they allow you to stock up on magic and arrows continually so that you do not run out. This is actually kind of important because we've been using it in the, in the previous rooms as well as in here in particular. And before we enter the dungeon, I also showed how to get some Chiteo Romani, a magical drink that gives you unlimited magic for that whole three-day cycle. Now if you drink it, you won't have to restore your green stuff with the green choo-choo here, but I'm just trying to show how to complete this dungeon without needing that potion, because I'm assuming that most of you that are following along right now do not have unlimited magic. 
So anyway, I'm going to be honest here. Uh, this is the kind of puzzle in a Zelda game that I really, really don't like. I mean, it's pretty obvious what needs to be done. It's not really challenging so much as just time-consuming and monotonous, and that bothers me. Like, I don't really feel, like, rewarded by completing this task. It's just goes on and on. And Majora's Mask is, as a game, it has quite a bit of monotonous tasks in it, but the game itself is so varied, and you're doing different stuff all the time, and you're always getting these prizes, that it doesn't really drive me crazy. I actually kind of enjoy it in a way. I mean, I feel rewarded for it, but this is the type of puzzle that just drives me nuts. When you finally get to the block to the end, you want to snap it into place, and this will open the door. Now, at this point, you can flip the room twice in order to get on top of the platform, because you normally can't reach it. However, you can simply wear the Zora mask to climb up. Once you are stocked up on arrows and magic, you want to go ahead and enter the next door, and then join me for the next video, and I will show you how to defeat the next mini-boss of Stone Tower Temple.